Welcome to Head to Head. Today we have a big topic, big head as well. Uh, we are talking about the Paris Eternal today. Uh, we've yep. been breaking down one team at a time. Biggest question going into the second half of the season. Today at the time of recording this, uh, you know, you may have already kind of gotten the jig that we recorded this in one setting. I'm not going to try to uh, you know, t- try and weasel my way around that because we are they in the same clothes in the same exact shot. They wouldn't be able time. to tell for you, Matt, because you only wear black anyway. So True. you might have just a cupboard full of it. For me, True. though, I do actually own seven different pairs of this Hammond t-shirt. So Yep, yep, there you go. Sell it out. Just because it, it was out. free, just because Overwatch uh, gave it to me. So today is uh, May 30th. Tomorrow is a big day for the Paris Eternal. Mm. May 31st is when Sparkle is eligible to play. And I want to know, what do you think? Do you think he will live up to the hype? End okay. the dreams of the people. Okay. Kill the dreams of the people. No, 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 no. I, I dare you. I have been the biggest Element Mystic fanboy for the longest time. I can't even remember when I started being a fan of this team, but it was when Sparkle was was first on it. It was Sparkle and it was Exy was on this team as well, right? Because they're previous teammates. Yeah. And, and I mean, uh, this is back when they had... Uh, Jexa and Repel on that team as well. This is like yeah. old Element Mystic. They were such a fun was team that, to was watch. That um, that was, was that Apex? Was that Apex? Do you know what? I, I can't even remember whether that was Apex or whether that was um, Korean Contenders. I think it must have been... Uh, uh, I, just watched, I, watched, I just watched the clips and the highlights. I don't, actually, I don't watch the whole thing. Uh, I just I watched know. the highlights. It was a while back anyway. That I'm a huge fan of Element Mystic and I think that Sparkle is an unbelievably uh, talented player. I think he's so good. Up. But Matthew, but, but he can't live up to the hype. The hype is way too large. Why not? It can't, Matt. The hype is monstrous. And I think that people have taken Sparkle's, the, the kind of hype and desire to watch Sparkle pound, and they haven't uh, plugged it into reality. It, he's, it, his, his most amazing heroes are heroes that do not get played right now and see no playtime on the horizon either. And yes, he's an amazing player that seems like he can pick up almost every hero, Um, but he plays a very like flashy, uh, not all aim, no brain style, but very much like the hyper focus of the team. That's where the game's going. Is that where the game's going, Matt? I don't know whether that can really I don't know whether he could put up those kind of performances in the Overwatch League. Like, he was previously playing at contenders level. He was playing against worse opposition. And we have have four contenders teams in the league. Yeah, and one of them's just getting bodied right now. Yeah, dude, look. Well, okay, hold on. Let's let's set the expectations first. What do you think the hype is and the expectations are for him before we see him play? Yeah, a a good place to start. What do you believe now? I think that people genuinely think he's going to come in and obliterate on heroes like Doomfist, on Genji, and be like a MVP caliber player. This is what the hype was coming into the year, was that Paris just have to hold on and Sparkle's going to carry them. Do you not believe he can do that? Like, it's it's not as crazy as it sounds. It's not as crazy as it sounds for someone to be carrying on Doomfist and Genji in the year of our Lord 2020. Hold on, hold on. I I think, okay, so I'm going to say this. I think Paris has uh, definitely been a team that has outperformed expectations. I, I yes. think. Yeah, yeah. I absolutely. think if you, it, it, this is a, this is an interesting kind of way to kind of look at it because, like, uh, Sinatra had this kind of hype in season one, uh, with the shock. The issue is, is the team was poo, uh, yeah. at the time. They couldn't support that play. And then everyone was like, Sinatra is not very good. What happens? They come back in year two with a better team, and he absolutely goes to town. Yeah. He also had this great is, coaches, but also Paris right. do have great coaches. But Paris so. has great coaches. Yeah. They have a very good team that's already competing with the top teams in the league. Where you view, I, I, I can you make an argument that Sparkle's not an upgrade over Nico? Uh, do you know what? Weirdly, on the May, I think you might be able to. Like Sparkle's played May before, yeah. but but his style of May isn't the you know, perfect May walls and getting everything in position. He still plays it like really aggro, trying to get sick icicles off and stuff like that. I'm, I'm of the belief that he can give them, like I I view the Paris Eternal, like that close from being a team that can like beat the top teams. Yes. Like they're, they're they're not far away. 
where I think he can give them that. He doesn't for, for the hype to be lived up to. If he if he makes up that difference and they start beating and contending with the top teams, he will get that hype and love and the appreciation because that is the difference. He doesn't need to be the world beater. He just needs to get them over the hump a little bit. And look, if, if XE can come back and play and you can play XE and Sparkle with some of these other teams in the NA division, uh, you have a uh, you know, fielder and FD God who are playing quite well. They you know Han bins looking really good. Mm. Like they can they can do it. My my issue here, Matt, is like, OK, that's a pretty interesting argument that if Sparkle, even if he didn't perform like a god, like people are expecting from him, even if he manages to get Paris into like a top two position in North America, people will still love him and, and appreciate yeah. him. The, the, he'll live up to the hype in that sense. But but uh, what heroes have Flex DPS players played so far in 2020? So, so I think the biggest, the, OK, so the biggest thing here is I'm I'm kind of banking that okay so he's been uh in I believe they're in New Jersey the team yes uh, right so he's been here the entire time uh right. been uh, I assume has been worked into scrims at this point and he's yeah. had ample time to play Echo I assume he's going to come in and be able to pick up that hero and play it at a high level but, but uh, that is, is a big assumption it's that a is big a big assumption. assumption because there are other players that we assumed that would be really good on echo i mean the the one that i always bring up is sure for because jeff kaplan himself had sure for in mind when he was releasing the hero he was on the stream i think with sinatra and he was talking about the flexibility when she uses her ult and saying that you know that would be sure for's hero and he, he he hasn't even played it at all some of the other people we expected to be great at echo like profit have actually looked really poor so i think it's a very large assumption to uh, say I think that, that when you compare sparkle's going to be great when you compare sparkle to profit i think like sparkle just plays way more aggressive and loose than profit like profit's always kind of played like i don't want to say yeah. safe but like profit doesn't strike you as the one who's just gonna like dive in and just like murder like three people out of nowhere like yeah he's a bit smarter his timing is yes. probably his best asset he's got a great read on the game but, but i feel like but he does kind of, you have to play on your own Maybe a little bit, but considering the Prophet was really amazing at Genji and really amazing at Tracer, Tracer yeah. and he can play, as it appears, every hero under the sun, uh -huh. whereas Sparkle's got a bit more of a refined, a refined uh, hero pool, although we haven't seen him, you know, we haven't so seen right him now, across every meta ever, but... Right now, the Paris Eternal, they are uh, seven and five. Right. Uh, for the season uh directly above them is the florida mayhem at nine and four and then uh and then it goes to the shock and philly i they if they if, if sparkle comes in and plays well and they jump over the florida mayhem i think everyone will be ecstatic and i think that's doable and that's definitely doable I, I don't think that that would qualify as living up to the hype, though, unless Sparkle himself was putting up great performances. If he's okay. part of just a normal... I, I also don't really believe that Sparkle could be just another player on the team. He, he has always played in his Tier 2 history as the focal point of a team. Like, is the team. He always is the team. I mean, especially when he plays the Doomfist. He requires all of those resources to perform. And at the moment... Apart from the Echo, and if he dominates on the Echo, then yes, he's going to live up to the hype, because Echo's one of those heroes that you just can hard carry on. But outside yeah. of the Echo, which we have no data to know how good he is whatsoever, all of the other heroes that Flex DPS players have been playing so far this season have either been Hitscan, which he's not that great at, he's mostly a projectile DPS player, and May. And May is not that kind of hero. That isn't going to play into Sparkle's strengths and arguably nico is the better pick there so unless we get a drastic shift in the meta i just don't see how sparkle can be which, the focal point which, of paris which we don't know i mean and and look i think if they if they leapfrog the florida mayhem the overall standings and they make it to like a you know, a semis and give the shock a close game or can get to a finals of one of these monthly tournaments that is that is warranted of the hype because because uh, I, I, I think you just have that added piece. Like, I truly believe, like, he is enough to get this team over the hump. We're like, okay, so they add Sparkle to this team. Uh, can you see any of the teams below them in North America passing? 
Uh, like I the mean, only ones I can think of would be the Dallas Fuel could make a run in the second half. Well, they just like, lost to the see- Valiant as well. The Valiant are a team that yeah, the could, Valiant could too, do something I mean, as well. It, it's feasible. I need to bring up the full standings uh, as well. So you would have, uh, uh, I, I, can, I can read it to you. So the Atlanta Reign are 5-5. Five and five. Uh, uh-huh. The Valiant are 6-6. Six and six. Gladiators at 4-5. and five. A few at four and six, the Outlaws at five and nine, and then we jump down to like yeah. Toronto, Vancouver, Washington. Yeah, Boston. I think I think it's possible that Dallas could uh, could make some kind of run, but it seems unlikely unless Decay can be a freak. Um, the Gladiators, I think, if they get their shit together, might be able to contest with them. But honestly, I think you're right. The Paris Eternal should be in the best position out of these teams to continue going up the standings because they've already proven at the beginning of the season that they can hang. I just, for me, it always comes back to, all right, Sparkle's an amazing player. Yes. But unless you can tell me what hero he's going to play, I well, don't you, understand how he's going to have that impact. Because but you also, I like, mean, are you under the assumption the he hasn't played? Are, are you under the assumption that he hasn't been scrimming or playing? or Because I'm under the assumption that he's probably been scrimming with this team for months at this point. I don't know uh, whether he'll have been scrimming for months, because normally teams are a bit more short-term than that. I think that... Some playtime, probably. With, yeah, I think he's probably had some playtime. And also considering that there's a two-week break just as he becomes eligible, I feel like they'll just go hard in this two-week break. Like, I don't even really know whether he'll have been scrimming in the lead-up to the May tournament. Like, maybe that was one of the reasons that Paris didn't do that well, actually, because yeah. they were scrimming a little bit with uh, with Sparkle. It's He's difficult to know. a few blocks a but, week, probably. But I, I do think he'll have been playing with them. But but again, like, about about half of the compositions that we've seen have been double hit scan this year. We've seen, like, Sombra Tracer. We've seen, like, Sombra Reaper, McCree Torb. We've seen... Um, the the, the Ash uh, Tracer, Ash yeah. Torb. Like, we've seen a lot of double hit scans so far this year, which is unusual. We don't often <laughs> see that. The only yeah, yeah. times that we've seen projectile being played is a bit of Hanzo. We've seen May Hanzo, and he, yeah. could, he could come out and dominate on the Hanzo. But I do think there's other players in the league that will be able to be as good or uh, better than him on the Hanzo. The, the way you almost speak about it is that, like, you think getting Xy back in the lineup is almost more important than having Sparkle come back. Genuinely could be true. It really could be true. Because if we end up playing a lot of McCree, playing a lot of Ash, playing a lot of the Widowmaker, then having Xy, or, or even the Sombra and Tracer, then having Xy in this lineup to play double hit scan could arguably be more impactful than having Sparkle, this promised child uh, for the Paris yeah. Eternal. And I think we could reasonably see Sparkle actually playing quite a bit of hitscan, like occasionally playing yeah. the, the Tracer or the McCree or something to just try and make something work because he's going to be better at it than Nico is. Uh, almost Probably. certainly. Probably, yeah. You, uh, you would say that, yeah. And, and so it's it, there is a, a universe in which we see for the second half of the season Sparkle play a lot of the time on heroes he's not that comfortable on and just do all right and is that great yeah that's pretty great like, honestly like a, because like you a, filled in you, for Xy, but it's not do, enough do to live up with, to his do you think with his skill do you think he'd be a better hit scan player than Nico? i think so yes i think that so far what we've seen from sparkle has indicated that he's uh, just got a genuine raw talent for the game feel of the game yeah, yeah his zarya was exceptionally good except that he fed quite a bit on it it was almost like watching <laughs> sinatra at the beginning of his game you know where he you could tell the guy was just hitting everything but then he was also caught out of position quite a lot by trying to play that aggressively that's the kind of play that sparkle is but do i think that he's naturally suited to the hit scan more than the projectile no not really no. and so i think that's a bit of a waste of his talent and i think that this year unless the meta drastically shifts we might have a little bit of a waste See, of I- sparkle uh, I believe, though, like, I, I, th- I think they close it out. If you were going to add this big of an impact player to your team and maybe they change the dynamics of your team, there's no better time than now. We have a long break come uh, now that we're in, yeah. right? Three weeks. We come back. We're still in hero pools. You have an, another probably four or five weeks before we jump into another tournament. If there was a time to have and, and you're also uh, you're sitting like what fourth place pretty much in north america if there was ever a time to add another player who could be an impact uh it you couldn't ask for better timing than now if you're the paris eternal and definitely one that has the potential to be better than nico on every pick like he definitely still has the potential to be better on may and he's 
got the potential to fill in for Exe somewhat on the hitscan play uh, picks as well. So I still think he's going to be a great addition to Paris. I think he's going to add something to the Paris Eternal team. But don't expect a world from him, Paris fans. Uh, don't put the weight on his shoulders. me the world, Sparkle. I believe in the Sparkle hype. Josh is trying to throw some water on the flames of, of how hot this debut is going to, to be. Trying to temper the expectations. I'm pretty sure I know what's going to be in the comments. You guys are going to be pretty hyped to see Sparkle. I think that goes without a doubt. So yeah. uh, let us know what you guys think of Sparkle and the Paris Turtle, and we'll see you next time on Head to Head.